The purpose of this presentation is to describe the generic nature of food fraud and its devastating consequences. The presentation will also cite a case study in the field of honey, which the U.S. Pharmacopoeia has classified as the third largest area of um, adulteration in, in the current era. Our aim is to find solutions to solve the problem and prevent its recurrence. Uh, dur during the past two decades, there has been a pandemic of food fraud, and this pandemic has been uh, associated with economically motivated adul adulteration, custom fraud, label fraud, and other modes of fraud. The manifestations include a variety of products, honey, meats, coffee, wines, frozen versus fresh fish, and, and the list goes on. The USP's food fraud list uh, is shown in, in this slide that describes the most prevalent um, foods which have been subject of adulteration. In response to this pandemic, there's been a growing international movement from many directions to oppose food fraud. And this includes concern by the United Nations Food and Drug, Food and Agricultural Organization. The food fraud in the sphere of international honey has pr provided a very vivid case study. The chart illustrates uh, some important features in the sphere of honey. Over a 20-year period, there's been an explosive growth in the quantities of product, which is shown by the blue line. At the same time, the number of beehives throughout the world has been stable. During the same period, numerous factors have caused the productivity measured by the weight of honey per hive to decline. This decline in productivity is coupled with the collapse of honey pricing resulting from food fraud. Uh, the contradiction between retail and wholesale honey prices, the patterns that have been described manifest a complete aberration of the laws of economics. Demand has increased, prices have increased on the retail level, on the packer level, but productivity has declined. The prices of inputs should dramatically increase, not collapse. The problem of food fraud has created an ex existential economic catastrophe for beekeepers producing authentic honey who are in a price competition with sellers of low price fraudulent uh, products. Dr. Uh, Stan Dabakow, uh, emer emeritus economist from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, has illustrated this contradiction where the prices of honey uh, on the retail level has increased and the prices for the beekeepers has collapsed. The annual estimated honey revenue losses based upon normative prices versus actual honey prices are illustrated in this chart. Um, a similar calculation was presented in my article in the American Bee Journal on June 2020, which shows comparable prices for American beekeepers over the past four years. The committee studying food fraud in Appamondia, which is two scientific committees representing the World Congress of Beekeepers, issued a report regarding the decreasing prices of honey. This report describes the plague of adulteration as the greatest damage to beekeepers in the history of beekeeping. And it also shows that the economic damages to beekeepers uh, in, who produce authentic honey is, a bill, is approximately a billion dollars. And when we look at a more macro position, the the uh, losses are in fact multi-billions of dollars. The authenticity of honey um, has to be understood as honey 
resulting from the complete interaction of zoological and botanical life forms, be the nectars and other secretions of, of the plants. The adulteration in uh, Europe, Canada, Australia, and India, as well as numerous reports in the Chinese press, have indicated that adulterated honey is being sold to consumers all over the world. In the United States, anti-dumping duties uh, result in a number of prosecutions, charge honey importers with criminal activity and collusion of packers and exporters, um, creating what was called Honeygate, which was described as the largest instance example of food fraud in the history of the United States. What we've observed is that there are various modes of adulteration in the honey industry. These modes are used separately and or in combination. It is relevant to note that per the uh, compositions which contain adulterated products, irrespective of the percentage of the adulterants, that composite is regarded as adulterated. This is per Kodak standards. These methods of illicit production have created a situation where the quantities of adulterated honey have no ceilings and their prices no floors. This allows those engaged in adulteration to have a field day, reaping illicit profits, um, while those who produce authentic honey have had faced a deterioration of their motivation and their survival as beekeepers is in jeopardy. Recently, a, a report of French beekeepers who were interacting with a Chinese delegation in France has been published in the website Happy Service. The beekeepers were confronted with um, a, uh, a fair amount of mockery as they were describing the French modes of production, which are similar to American, Canadian, Argentine modes of production of authentic honey as um, archaic. The Chinese mocked the production uh, methods. And here's a slide from Walter Hefeker, who's president of the European Beekeepers Association of a Chinese factory, which he described as uh, comparable to a European modern brewery. These are not the classic modes of production of honey. The detection of all or any of the above modes of adulteration requires the use of most advanced scientific uh, instrumentation and also the comprehensive global database regarding honey. This is especially true when a food product like honey is a result of many variables and manifest great chemical diversity. Fortunately, the analytic toolbox for detecting food fraud and numerous products as well as honey contains very sophisticated scientific methodologies. The quality and authenticity of food products cannot be abstracted from either the chemical constituents or the modes of production of those products. This reality and trend is manifested in many ways, including the following description of fish oils, because manufacturers who are exercising their social responsibility to consumers, and in the case of honey, to broader issues such as global food security, are concerned to draw demarcations. And those demarcations are including descriptions of proper versus illicit modes of production. So this trend is, is ongoing. Nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR, is among the most prominent of the tools used for the analysis of honey. Um, this technology has been developed and is continuously being updated. 
It has approximately 20,000 samples from the global database of honey. This, this contrast to the database of traditional methods used to deal with the types of adulteration that were prevalent 20 years ago. And that database had only 100 samples, 98% of which were from beekeepers. The NMR can test for over 36 parameters of the chemical profiles found in authentic honey. It can detect numerous uh, issues, including origin, geographic and local origin, as well as botanical origin. In the struggle against food fraud and for justice in the honey industry has led to a wide range of countermeasures. And these include deferred prosecution for um, honey circumvention, which happened to involve 30 countries, but also all of that honey that was being circumvented in order to avoid anti-dumping duties was adulterated honey and using uh, models of production which are not consistent with the authenticity of honey. There's also a very important Netflix documentary titled uh, Rotten about honey uh, adulteration. There was the release of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's commercial description of honey uh, in December 2019. And there's the use of the release of the U.S. Pharmacopoeia's standard for honey that's now in, in a comment period. Professor Michael Roberts has two important papers, which I trust you will introduce. I've written that these should be mandatory readings because they involve the importance of honey on a global basis because beekeepers are an in, in endangered species, as Michael described, but their endangerment is a threat to food security and ecological sustainability. The Apomandia Forum on honey adulteration that was held in September in Montreal 2019 had a thousand members attending. This was the largest such meeting in, in the history of the honey industry and it really was an inflection point because those who had posed uh, nuclear magnetic uh, testing who had supported those modes of adulteration like adding um, bioengineered sweeteners, using resin technology, uh, extracting immature honey before it's been transformed from nectar into honey. Those people became totally isolated and were compelled to sing a different song. Uh, these milestones serve as a tributary flowing into a large uh, river that's leading to an era of justice for beekeepers. Uh, the struggle against food fraud, both in the sphere of honey and more generically regarding all foods, is evolving and is being manifested in many spheres. The foundation of these efforts resides in scientific advances in detecting modes of adulteration and food fraud. Uh, it also in includes developing a rigorous, comprehensive, and a more intrusive traceability regime that incorporates the modes of production. A demarcation between um, legitimate and illegitimate modes of production is emerging. And I think we can say we're in an area, era of unprecedented awareness, opposition, and concern with food for it in general.